What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about Canadian Heritage Minutes, which are these short videos that teach you about important moments and people throughout all of Canadian history, and today I am excited to continue my journey watching all of the Heritage Minutes. There's a hundred of these things. I think we've watched about 36 of them so far, so we've got quite a bit more to learn and I'm excited for that. So today, I'm interested in what we are gonna learn about, starting with Queenston Heights, which I've never heard of before, uh, Mohawk Chief John Norton, and 80 Grand River Warriors. Hold off American soldiers, those pesky Americans. But seriously, um, Mohawk Chief John Norton and I don't know what the Grand River Warriors, is this like a, like an indigenous uh, Canadians, native Canadian tribe or group, I think. Um, they are holding off American soldiers until reinforcements arrive at the Battle of Queenston Heights is one. Oh, the battle is won because uh, Chief John Norton and the Grand River Warriors hold off the Americans. That's so <laughs> weird to say as an American myself, but <laughs> that's how the history goes. <laughs> Until reinforcements arrive and then they win the Battle of Queenston Heights. That's what Queenston Heights is. It's a battle, maybe a place. Um, this is 1812, so this is like having to do with the War of 1812, which was a conflict that America was involved in, and Canada, and possibly Britain as well. Um, is there any more information on this? Battle of Queenston Heights was fought during the War of 1812, right, okay. On October 13th, 1812, one of the most famous battles of the war. This is not a battle I've ever heard of, I have to admit. The Battle of Queenston Heights was a struggle for a portion of the Niagara and Escarpment overlooking Queenston, where more than 1,000 American soldiers crossed into Upper Canada. These were Americans encroaching on Canadian territory. Um, part of the American force reached the top, circled the British artillery, forced the British from the heights, and then General Isaac, one of the British military leaders, was killed and the Mohawk chief, John Norton, that's who we're learning about today, I think, and John Brandt, and 80 Haudenosaunee, and Delaware warriors held back Americans for hours. Okay, perfect. That's all the backstory we need here. Let's take a look at Queenston Heights. Oh, wow. General Brock is dead. Americans hold the heights. <laughs> Again, there's something about this that's so bizarre. Um, just from my American point of view, I guess, just hearing them talk about Americans that way, even though it makes sense, because, like, the Americans are literally invading their territory and going to war with them, but there's something strange about being an American and hearing them be like, those pesky Americans, ah, oh, we gotta get them, and, you know, <laughs> it's, it's interesting hearing history from, like, the other point of view, I guess. It, it's a good thing, I think. We are but 100 men. They are thousands. So, so this is like some kind of inspiring, amazing story of a thousand men, the Americans, versus like a hundred that they have here. And it's up to them to decide if they want to go confront this 1,000 man army, knowing that it's going to be nearly impossible and they very well may die. This is a very, very uh, dramatic story, if that's the case. This is very interesting. Our, days, our future was determined by our oath, not the Americans. This land does not belong to them. Mm. Oh, wow. Comrades and brothers, remember the fame of ancient warriors. <laughs> Let not their numbers frighten you. I know in my heart, before the sun falls behind these hills, our enemy will have fallen before you. Oh my god, this is, this is so dramatic. This is so hype. He's getting me 
hyped up and worked up and I'm American. I'm supposed to be <laughs> I'm supposed to be on the other side. And this <laughs> but he's got me. Oh yeah, let's go get him. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, no. <laughs> it's the wrong side. Uh, I don't want to get into the details of who's right and wrong in this whole conflict. I don't understand any of that stuff. But uh, from what I do understand, this is a very inspiring story of a hundred very, very brave men. They basically, the way they figure it, they have to just hold off the American 1,000 man force for a certain amount of time. That's all they have to do. And then. Like, everything will be okay. Reinforcements will come. Well, what can we hold them? Oh, wow. At the Battle of Quinston Heights, 80 Grand River warriors, including John Norton and wow. John Grant, held off the Americans for hours to help take back the Heights. Wow. Wow, that is... I like how they showed it at the end here. Uh, let me see if I can get a picture of that. Yeah. Like, this shot here? That's scary. Like, just just showing the actual battle like this. I, I like that they did that. Like, how many enemy forces are in the background. Like, thousand. And then it's just like, you know, a couple of guys laying on a hill with their rifles holding them off. It, it's a pretty amazing story. Um, that is a part of Canadian history and Canadian war that I genuinely have never heard about. Even though there's like a... It's a big part of American history as well, because Americans are... Maybe it's because Ameri the Americans, like, got uh, beaten by 90 people uh, versus 1,000. Maybe that's why we don't talk about it very much. That, that very well may be a little embarrassed. But anyway, fascinating, fascinating story. And inspiring as well. No matter who you are, that's inspiring. All right, let's keep going. Next we have Juno Beach. Is that the name of a person or a place? Broadcaster Johnny Lombardi entertains his comrades in the field during a respite of the World War II D-Day? Taking of Juno Beach by Canadian forces. What? Uh, this is certainly something that's not talked about, like, in our American history classes. Canada's role in World War II. And even more specific, this is... Johnny Lombardi entertaining. It looks like he's got a, this, a picture of a trumpet. He's got a trumpet or something? Entertaining comrades in the field uh, on D-Day? Like, <laughs> hopefully not during the actual, like, conflict. This is during a respite, a break in the conflict, and he is busting out the musical tunes. Why not? Um, this is Juno Beach. I've not really heard of that either. Is there any more details? Juno Beach was the Allied code name for a 10-kilometer stretch of French coastline assaulted by Canadian soldiers on D-Day. Wow. So this is specifically an area of the French coast that Canada was responsible for, Canadian soldiers. On D-Day, during World War II, Canadian armies. 3rd Infantry Division, 2nd Armored Brigade, seized the beach and its seaside villages while under intense fire from German defenders. So that is the backstory for this. Oh my god, and what a backstory it is. Literally the start of World War II, D-Day, the on the beach. Um, but this has something to, this is like a more positive story of like uh, playing some music. Uh, apparently, I'm I'm interested in what that is. Do the Brit thing. Come on, Ralph. This is the BBC. Here is the news. Dauntless Canadian troops beat back hitherto invincible German forces on Normandy's Juno Beach Where? today. <laughs> okay, so they're like sitting around joking. Oh my! You know what? Only freaking Canadians could have this level of like positivity. Um, what an amazing attitude to have, and it's just so fitting that these are that it's Canadians. Because Canadians are kind of known for having a positive attitude. Um, even in the midst of literal D-Day, World War II, um, they're kind of finding a way to have a rest and joke around and maybe even feel some sense of normalcy in this sort of extraordinary, like, you know, your life is on the line, people are dying around you. Like, it, it's pretty traumatic uh, circumstances. And so they're, like, trying to joke around and have fun for a little bit. So I, I actually really like that. 
No beach well, today. And this is Canadian Armed Forces Radio with something that really matters. That great, great hit by Toronto's own Ruth Lowe. <laughs> okay. Oh! This is actually speaking to them. This is actually, all of their expressions are changing. How did this guy get, uh, how did he bring his trumpet to, like, the beach on D-Day? <laughs> like, how did he do that? That's what I would be thinking if I were there. And, or, <laughs> as much as everyone seems to be loving it, imagine he just whips out his trumpet. And he's like, hold on, everyone. Get a load of this. And uh, you're like... <laughs> down somewhere or down on the beach like trying to sleep in your tent trying to get some sleep after the, the first day of war and this guy's just blaring his trumpet and you're like shut up all right <laughs> i don't know why i think of the ridiculous uh aspects of the <laughs> this kind of stuff but i don't think that's what happened um instead it's like some kind of real touching moment Wow. Johnny. Musician and broadcaster Johnny Lombardi would continue to play a prominent role in our popular culture for another half century. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. That's like kind of surreal. Being on the beach, like they're getting bombed, literally in the middle of his solo. They're getting bombed. You can see all the, the ships and stuff in the background and... But he, he found a way to, to get everyone to smile and relax for even just like a minute or two. And that's an amazing thing that he did in this kind of time. Double time! But not before he and the men of the 7th Canadian Infantry had earned the world's gratitude for what they did at Juneau Beach. Mm. How did they, wow, how did this become a story? Like, so this Heritage Minute is not really about... Juno Beach, the uh, fighting, what the Canadian Armed Forces did tactically or anything like that. This was focusing on like this very specific moment of resting on the beach and trying to have a moment of getting back to normal, enjoying some trumpet playing, making some jokes, um, camaraderie with your fellow uh, men in arms. Um, really interesting Heritage Minute. I, I actually enjoyed that one a lot. Really interesting. Um, and cool that that story has, like, lived on, uh, that it was told. All right, let's see. Uh, we got another one here called Joseph Armand Bombardier? Uh, I, am I butchering this? Jo is this French? Joseph Armand Bomb Bombardier. A boyhood fascination with tinkering... He evolves into a career as an innovator and entrepreneur. This is a Canadian innovator, inventor, entrepreneur. Is there any more information on this? Uh, Joseph Armand Bombardier, entrepreneur, inventor of the snowmobile? Really? Of the snowmobile, of all things. And skidoo? Skidoo? What is a skidoo? Hold on, I can't let that slide. What is a ski do? Here we go. It's a snowmobile. So this is also a snowmobile. It's a ski do. Is that like a brand? Is that like a type of snowmobile? Okay. So inventor of the snowmobile and ski do, which is looks like a type of snowmobile to me. Um, while Bombardier's many inventions demonstrate his mechanical skill, his ability not only to respond to transportation needs but to create them gave rise to his namesake corporation, rec its record of innovation. So it's Bombardier Incorporated. So he has a company named after him. I'm, I'm actually not familiar with it, but this is, a, this is a Canadian inventor of the snowmobile, of all things. All right, cool, let's take a look. Hey guys, this just came from Montreal. Oh. And it's pro equipment. This, uh, this is 1920. This is one of the older heritage minutes. You can tell just by like the way it's filmed. Listen, hey, Joseph Armand, you make a lot of money serving mass, so maybe you could buy this. Oh, sorry guys, but well, well I've got other plans in mind. 
Is this dubbed? I think... Wait, where is this? Valcourt. This feels like this is a French-Canadian. This must, this must be in some part of, like, French Canada. I think they're speaking French, but they've overdubbed it in English, so I can understand, which is good. Plans in mind. It'll take more than a couple of screws and a box of springs to repair your father's watch, my boy. Oh, he's already inventing. Say, Mr. Laflamme, how much do you want for this? Uh, my tools are not for sale. Hey, I can pay. <laughs> what? He's already, already at this age, he's already putting together like mechanical cars and inventing stuff at such a young age. So he was somewhat of like a innovative mechanical prodigy or something. That's pretty amazing. Especially like back in the day, I have a huge amount of respect for this kind of thing because if you wanted to learn how to be like an engineer or something, let alone at like... 14 or 15 years old, whatever he, age he is, um, you couldn't even look it up. You can't go on the internet and look it up on Google. You couldn't even look up a YouTube video about how to assemble this mechanical car. Imagine. I don't even want to imagine. <laughs> I don't even want to imagine that world. I can't, I can't believe there was a time when people didn't have Google and YouTube. I can't imagine. <laughs> Very impressive. What the heck? Wow. This is cool. This is a very cool heritage minute. This is really focusing on this individual. And, uh, yeah, if you can make, like, a toy train, the next logical step is, uh, the snowmobile, obviously. <laughs> From his first experimental snowmobile to jet aircraft, Joseph Armand Bombardier's vision would eventually circle the world thanks to the company that still bears his name. Wow, so he made a whole company, Bombardier. The the narrator said this so much more French than I could. Je, Joseph Armand Bombardier. <laughs> That's my best attempt. Uh, very cool. I, I don't know, like, many Canadian inventors, let alone uh, French-Canadian inventors, so this is a really cool highlight of this individual. And, uh, the snowmobile. I wonder if he made anything else with his company, Bombardier. Or I wonder if that's still around to this day. Sounds like it might be. Anyway, this is very fascinating. I, I absolutely enjoyed these three heritage minutes today. Very different, honestly. Although, uh, they had to do with World War II and the War of 1812 and then inventing snowmobiles and just all this random stuff that's so fun to learn about Canadian history. So uh, I enjoyed this quite a bit. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment with your thoughts on any of these heritage minutes here today. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada and Canadian culture, Canadian history, and just learning things about Canada for the first time, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.